So moving on, Annie Matthews says, what are some of the do nots in an interview? So do not, okay, 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 yes. There's so many, okay, and I have some of them listed in my e-course, but your attire, you have to be professional, so do not show up in an unprofessional attire. Do not wear uncomfortable shoes where you can't take the tour of the hospital without complaining about your feet or you're the last person in the back of the group. Do not be chewing gum, okay? Do, do not be arrogant or conceited. That's like a given, but you'll be surprised how many people don't realize that there's still some level of professionalism that's expected of you. Um, do not talk bad about another program. Do not talk bad about another interview. Do not talk bad about another program director or something else that could be easily tied to your medical career. Okay? Do not talk bad about people in general. Because if you talk bad about somebody else, the program is thinking when you leave here, you're going to talk bad about them as well. Um... There are several do nots, and I have them on my e-course, but that's what I'll leave you with for now. All right, Annie Matthews asked again, Hey, Dr. Loom, how do we have a person tell me about yourself? This is, a, this is like a really frequently asked question. Um, so maybe I'll answer it for myself. If someone asks me during an interview, tell me about yourself, I would say something, say I was applying for internal medicine. I would say, you know, I was born and raised in Cameroon. I lived there for a majority of my life. Um, due to several circumstances, I had to move away for school, particularly financial limitations and the inability to get into medical school in my own home country based on limitations. Um, so I moved and went to the Caribbean after starting off my undergraduate studies in microbiology in Cameroon. Um, while in the Caribbean, that was a very tough time in my life, but I'm so glad that it led me with the up, led me to the opportunity of being able to train in the U.S. And um, now, as a fourth year interviewing for rotations, I've learned so many lessons on resilience, adaptation, moving to different places. So much so that I feel like I'll be very well ready when once I start residency, just because of the ex excitation that I've built up to this point. Um, I'm from a family of doctors. I, my mom is a doctor. I have other relatives in the family as well. And they have really been like the light and shining armor for me to pursue this career despite the challenges. I told you about myself. Hopefully a, a program director that's listening likes me, right? That's what you should hope for. Um, what is the best way to prepare for an interview? This is from Khalid Laila. Practice, 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 practice with people, practice in the mirror, practice your body language. Um, practice, practice, practice. You really need to practice. You can find a friend that is already an attending and practice with them. If you don't have a resource like that, you can always contact me. I'll be more than happy to help you out. Um, I, through my online course, I can, I have a one-on-one -on -one training coaching program for IMGs to help them answer questions in the most efficient way that builds compatibility. Um, let's get some more questions before... How do we explain gaps and low scores? So if you're asked about those, you need to figure out how best to explain it. Some people have gaps and low scores because maybe they had financial constraints. Um, some people have gaps because they had other stressors in their family. Um, I know people that have had gaps because they were for illness. So whatever the reason is, you just really need to be honest about it. And you need to always share a lesson from how you've gotten better from it and how you don't intend to have gaps again in the future. So for low scores, the fear is if I was a program director, I'd be worried that you wouldn't pass your boards or you'll struggle through ITEs. So you need to figure out what you've learned from it, maybe what study techniques that you have adopted since failing or since having to um, have scored a low score and how you're going to change that once you come into the program. Um, that would really be the focus of that. And then again, gaps, you're going to just focus on uh, the true reason. I mean, you just want to be honest. And like I said, these people are human. So just find a true reason. Always have a lesson learned attached to it and how it made you better. And most people are empathetic enough to understand that. So suggestion on interview outfits for women. Suggestion, I'd say, you know, pearl earrings, really minimal jewelry, clean face, makeup. I mean, if you wear makeup, you can. But if you, I mean, if you, you know, just don't, don't do like the blue eyeshadow and the blue and the, the bright colors. Just leave that alone. Neutral nudes are great, very professional. Um, a, a dark colored suit, you want to really minimize distractions. You don't want anyone like distracted by how you appear. 
that they are not even focused on what you're saying. Um, you don't want like earrings that are going to make a lot of noise. Um, you know, a dark colored suit, like a black, blue, navy blue suit, gray, um, you know, with the undershirt. Uh, just, you know, don't be overly sexual in your appearance. Just be professional. Um, I wouldn't wear like skin hugging clothing. I wouldn't wear excessively mini skirts. Uh, maybe just keep it mid mid thigh, you know, whatever. Don't at, on the other extreme as as well. I mean, don't show up in there with a the Pentecostal skirt to your waist either, unless that's what you wear. But just be normal. I mean, just be normal. Be corporate, um, and don't really attract a lot of attention to yourself. That's unnecessary. That's the biggest take home point with whatever you wear. Just make sure that it portrays you as a doctor. Okay. I mean, you just need to look like a doctor. And unfortunately, medicine, or I would say fortunately, medicine has a high level of esteem around it. So you just want to carry yourself along the same lines. Um, what document should I carry? Yes, always take your copy of your CV, a copy of your application, a copy of your personal statement. Because they're going to ask you questions based on what you wrote. And if you forget, if you forgot what you wrote, you're going to be in trouble. Um, the other thing is sometimes the program or someone may not have a complete CV for you. This would be a great opportunity to share your copy with them. Um, all right, I think we'll end there for today. If you have more questions, you can reach out to me on imgroadmap.com or right here on Instagram. I'll be more than happy to answer more and more of your questions as we go along. As you'll notice, this is a long video, so I just split them up in several different um, segments. But thank you so much and you have a great day.